the table. Okay, this is gonna look funky to some people because what's going on with her legs? She has growth spurts. She's not broken, she's, she's not, not broken. lacking in nutrition. No, she's not. Right. She's actually growing too fast, which is part of the problem. So, uh, from the seated position, we can set the front legs. We can. Boom, I just moved that one. And this basically is just to get them familiar with having the four legs handled in ways that they don't control. When we're starting baby puppies, and even when we're starting some adult dogs, we always start with the head and neck first, and then move to the forehand, which is the front legs and the shoulders, right? So, although Dave says she's had some of this work, she hasn't had a lot of it. Rip! All we're Quiet! Doing, all we're doing is helping her get used to being physically handled. That's it. And standing still. And standing still. That's it. And again, there's no big rush to have this all done in one setting. That's why this class is actually six weeks in length, because we work on the four parts of the dog, and then we work on movement, and then we put the entire package together. So basically, it's a matter of just teaching the dog what the expectations are, when I put my hands on you, where I put my hands on you, you are not allowed to protest, you are not allowed to complain. You're not allowed to fight. And in a situation, you know, she's, she looks like she's built by a committee of blind people reading Braille and Chinese. That's okay. Because the goal is not to make her look pretty like a show dog in her very first session. The goal is to teach her that where I place your feet is where your feet reside until I move them. This isn't done in a day. Good. Now yeah, she's all leaning into me. Yeah, I see that. What's that? Oh. Just hold her there. Just just keep her head up and just stroke her back. You see she's all Yeah, she's all curved. That's fine. Again, like last night, if she starts, if her back starts getting hollow, just put your fingers underneath her belly and scratch her belly, just like so. Good. Let her relax a little bit. Now she's another one. See how she's pulling against your hand, right? Her head. She's trying to drop her head, pick up the whole head. There you go. Right. Let her rest into that, so she becomes more of a thing of relaxation as a, as opposed to protest. And they get used to it. Oh, look at that! A little mouthy mouthy action, huh? Good girl. Fix the uh, left front leg. Just bring it forward just there. All right, placement is always at the elbow, never lower than the elbow. And the reason why is because you can't control placement of the foot. What we want to do is when we're picking up the legs, what we're doing is we're actually redistributing weight. So I want to make sure that I control how I place the leg. And in a video that we did yesterday in last night's class, there was a puppy who, uh, ah. I think it was in the adult dog class, uh, that has a little bit of a crooked front leg. Uh, we don't know, if, you know why, but you can, actually, you can actually change the appearance of the foot by tilting the head away. If, the, if it's the right foot, you tilt the head away from the handler. If it's the left foot, you tilt the head towards the handler. And then when you rock the head back, it actually sets the weight over that leg. And she's kind of fidgety because, you know, she's, like I said, she's built by a committee of blind people that are reading Braille and Chinese. So, um, she's, you know, this is a horrible age to, to look at puppies. It's a horrible age to do anything with puppies because they're just kind of like a mess physically. Good girl. Just hold her there. Don't worry about the rear end. Just hold her on the front. Good. There we go. But she has, you know, and they all do. They all have issues with it. Nobody, no one, no one asks their dog to do things like this. It's unusual. And the reason we ask them to do this is because it settles them. And it's just like anything else. The, the pretense behind this work is the same as it is with any other work we do with puppies. Except what I'm doing to you. Nobody's trying to hurt you or kill you or eat you. 
And once they realize that, they're a lot nicer to deal with. You can wipe them down when they come inside from bad weather. Your vet can administer to them without having a big giant battle. Your groomer can turn them in the tub without them flopping around and getting all squicky because they don't like water or baths or whatever. Good, Good girl. girl. Okay. Now, because she's all fidgety fidgety, I'm going to move away from that, the stacking, and do she needs handling. more of the other stuff. Yep. And I think that surface is, she's a little bit more comfortable on that surface too. Pointy end away from me. And right there, when she starts twisting her head around like a chick from Exorcist because he's covering her eyes and lifting her lips, Stop. what we do is we go back and do it again until that stops. They're not allowed to do that. And the, the whole, people ask me all the time why I cover the eyes. So basically, think about that for a minute. When you cover a dog's eyes, what are you doing? You're expecting them to trust you, one, okay, and two, you're disabling their ability to use one of their senses. I'm doing it simultaneously. Not only am I covering the eye, but I'm inhibiting the mouth. If I teach them to accommodate that, what am I doing? I'm teaching them that they are not allowed to respond instinctively to that pressure, right? I cover the dog's eyes, he tries to back away. We go back until he stops fighting. I lift the dog's lips, he tries to fight and get my hands off of his mouth. We revisit that until he stops fighting. I can sit there and put my hand over my dog's eyes and cover their, cover their eyes and lift their lips and not get that response. Why? Because I expect it. The upside is when they go to the vet and that happens, what does the dog not do? Hey stranger, don't touch me. I'm gonna bite you. Super simple stuff. She's got a nice underjaw, nice strong underjaw. And we just keep going back until the puppy gives it up. Because again, nothing we're doing is hurting these animals. Everything we're doing is helping inoculate them against the stupid things that people do. They grab them inappropriately, they handle them inappropriately. Good girl. Good girl. Very nice. Good. Now, check her ears for brains. They're not installed yet. They're not installed yet? Super cute. She's got more cute cells than brain cells. It's just like everything else. We touch the feet. We touch every part of available anatomy in order to get the dog used to the idea that nobody is going to kill them and please let us do this because again what this dog is going to finish out at size-wise, Dave, probably about at least 75, 80 pounds, if not bigger. Well, those big feet, I'm going to say, yeah. Hold her while I get my nail clippers. Hi, monkey, monkey. My puppy is a monkey. Monkey, monkey, monkey. Hi, sweetheart. Good girl. I love your little nose. I love the little dent in your nose. She's got a little dent just above her. It's very cute. I think it's from Dave squishing it. Attack! Oh, it's nail trimming time. Puppies grow a lot. Puppies' nails should be handled at least once a week. For people who are trying to teach themselves how to cut their dog's nails, leave a little bit so you can review that two times a week. Stop. They grow fast. You can lay down. If your puppy has uneven wear, cut the nails that need cut. Save the others for another time. There's a lot of strategies you can use to get your dog used to being handled this way. This is one way. 
This only works if your dog weighs less than a certain amount or unless you're a strong man. She's wiggling. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> That's why my grooming table has a name. His name is Peter. There. Good girl. Look oh, at that. Nice. No muss, no fuss. Yay. Yay, poopy. Look at all we accomplished in 10 minutes with a puppy.